Welcome to our summit. It's a pleasure to be here. And today I would like to share with you our experience with migrating our mining authentication system to Kratos. It was an adventure that took some time and required a lot of focus and careful planning. Today, Kratos is running over 30 million users worldwide. How we did it? What was challenging? Let's find out. First, before we start, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I've been a senior software engineering fandom since 2015, and I am a proud member of platform team whose role is to maintain platform and help other teams by developing new tools and improving existing ones. Uh, we help teams build their microservices by providing them with all the necessary tools uh, to apply them to production. Our recent task was to integrate Kratos into our platform by replacing our current authentication services. The goal of this presentation is to cover challenges we encountered during the adoption of Kratos into our platform. To do that, we'll talk about what is fandom, where Kratos fits in our infra uh, infrastructure, and we will dive into challenges and how we solve them. This is a very broad topic, and since we have a limited amount of time, I've chosen to focus on a few chosen topics. First, let's talk about what is fandom. So fandom is the world's largest fan platform. It consists of hundreds of thousands of communities focused around specific topics. Each community creates small ecosystem that they interact with by posting new articles, using our discussion service, or using multiple tools that MediaWiki and Fandom provides. Users can create communities and will, um, at will, and tens or even hundreds of communities are created every day. Not every community is the same, though. Some have few tens of pages, but some have thousands. Even actors preparing for their roles for Obi-Wan were using our wikis to familiarize themselves with their roles and the Star Wars universe. It is no coincidence that the main Star Wars community is called Wikipedia. Here you can see one of our services that enhance wikis uh, with ability to create discussions around various topics. Users can post small articles, create polls, and comment on them. Similarly to forums, but this is more focused on content accessibility. As you can see, registered users have to be recognized by various of services, often written in different technologies. We run PHP, Java, JavaScript, Golang, Python, to name a few, all the benefits that distributed microservices provides. Number of requests varies between each communities. Some have few edits per month, some have tens per day. It also depends on activity around the topic of given wiki. For example, there but there is a new episode of a related TV series, new game being released, or a movie, those wikis search in number of edits and visits increase hundreds of times, sometimes even more. Fun fact, upon the release of Netflix TV series Cyberpunk Edge Runners, our Cyberpunk wiki saw over a 300% increase in traffic. What was even more amazing is that the wiki pages of our main protagonists, David Martinez and Lucy, score over 2,000% increase in views. So, as you can see, we have to deal with a sudden increase of traffic, and our system needs to handle that, especially when we are talking about authentication, which is always in a critical path for every request user is making to our platform. Here is the rundown of some basic metrics. Uh, we have around 30 million registered users. We serve around 2 billion page views per month, Around 100,000 requests hits our uh, backend from our users, and 10,000 requests is hitting just authentication services alone. And around, uh, sorry, so 100, 10,000 requests is hitting backend services, and 100 requests per second is hitting services authentication. And we try to keep those responses below 200 milliseconds. So uh, here is the brief overview of our authentication system. Let's briefly go through the main components that request has to go through in order to determine if user is authenticated or not. Usually the first in the process is unified community platform service, which is called UCP in short. The main service that serves the most of the content to our users. It is built on top of the, of the open source media wiki which is a wiki software 
the same platform that powers Wikipedia. This is a huge monolith with plenty of custom extensions developed by us or by community. It is very important to know at this stage if the user is logged in or not, which determines the behavior of the whole platform. It uses Identity Mapper as a source of truth about authenticated users. More about that service just in a moment. Authentication Frontend, this is a relatively simple Node.js application that serves UI for the users and allows them to log in and register to Unified Platform via browser. It acts as a frontend for clients, for Kratos, and does not contain any business logic. This is very similar to example frontend service that already provides with a quick start setup. Next, the authentication backend is a service that allows users uh, unified community platform to authenticate users that visit our pages. Previously, this was a custom server written in Golang with some extra business logic injected in, into it. Now, it is a Kratos role to verify users' credentials, session tokens, and handle any changes made to the identities. Most requests that hit Kratos are not coming directly from the users. Instead, our services are calling it via FinFacade service, Identity Mapper. Exception are requests made from the browser via Fandom Frontend, which is the standard Kratos flow. There are some requests from other services, but there are few compared to the requests incoming from the facade. Next, the companion services. They are consist of few services that are responsible for some user flows that are not directly related to Kratos, but are important user flows that rely on user identities. Example, maybe OEDCI authentication for mobile, right to be forgotten service, and similar. Other services are any other services that queries Kratos directly or consume data exposed by Identity Mapper to identify registered users. Now, Identity Mapper is a special service that acts as a facade between Unified Community Platform and Kratos. This encapsulates some custom business logic that is specific to fandom, and it was not ideal to put this logic somewhere near Kratos. It is main purpose is to map between native user IDs and Kratos identity IDs. Unified Community Platform relies on its internal users uh, to work with, and Kratos just maps to those via Identity Mapper. While Kratos handles all the registration, log login, and settings flow, Identity Mapper enhanced session with our custom data that does not fit into Kratos well and allow us to easily bind UCP with Kratos identities. This allows us to mostly decouple Kratos from UCP so we can run it without heavy modifications and keep the business logic in one place. So why we choose Ori and Kratos in the first place? We value open source. Our UCP service, which is serving most the content to the users, is based on open source media wiki code. We try to contribute to the communities by fixing some bugs or adding new features and give feedback. Ori does have a record of creating and maintaining authentication services. Hydra is one example of that. By combining our effort with Ori, we have a chance to build a robust and secure authentication system that others can benefit from. Ori has also many projects that are evolving in steady pace. We already we shipped with an uh, alpha version of Kratos as a proof con concept, and before we launched it onto production, there were already a few new versions released. Right now, we, have, we are migrating to version 0 0.10, we actually did, and we are planning to upgrade often. We had very few, uh, we have a cute few conversations with Ori, especially early in the process of adopting Kratos, and we got the answers we needed directly from Ori either, or from community Slack channel, which is quite active. Deploying Kratos is pretty straightforward. You need a database and a front end for your users to interact with. No need for a complex caching systems or synchronization services. All is nicely packed in one binary that you can deploy to most of the platforms, which is quite handy. It is Kubernetes friendly. There were no major changes needed to get it working in our private Kubernetes cluster, which was quite important for us. Bring your own frontend is a nice feature and seems like an extra and necessary effort at the first glance, but it gives us a quite flexibility when it comes to the UI that is presented to the users. Now, uh, performance and scalability is very important for us. 
we have a lot of users, 30, mil 30 million registered users and at least 100 times more anonymous users. We need our app systems to be fast and stable. We have a platform of millions of users that are actively using it every second. We need to transparently transition to a new authentication platform with minimal downtime and minimal impact to the users. During final switch, we had to log out all the user though to avoid issues with sessions. Keeping sessions in sync in both systems is not as easy task as we and we decided to avoid any potential issues that may cause user to be improperly authenticated. We can't adapt to the new system and start from the scratch. Rather, we had to incorporate new systems into our existing infrastructure, which added extra complexity and created new challenges for us. So what was our solution to this problem? Uh, our solution was to deploy service in what it's called a shadow mode. And, and this in the shadow mode, uh, the traffic was passing through the, those both services uh, from production and it was and we are doing it incrementally. Each request that was hitting our backend had potentially two authentication ses sessions. One would be our old and trusty token. And then additionally to that, we would um, have a brand new Kratos session. When our platform decided to check if user is authenticated or not, it would make calls to the legacy system as it did before. But additionally to that, it would also verify if the Kratos session is present and check it as well. At the end of the process, we would compare the results from both systems and check for any discrepancies if there are any and log them for future reference. Running such setup on production produces metrics that gives us a certainty that the new system meets our expectations. In terms, in terms of performance, as well as stability and correctness, which meant that each user authenticated in the old system is exactly the same in the Kratos. This uh, running incrementally helped us uh, stabilize our platform and didn't introduce any interruptions along the way which was very important for us. Now, to properly run services in shadow mode, we had to import our existing users into Kratos. 35 million users is not a small amount. And while Kratos did not provide all the necessary APIs to accomplish that at the moment, it was pretty straightforward to implement our custom tool that deal with the um, data directly rather than using relatively slow API calls. Uh, doing 35 million imports through REST service would take forever. Our import process was pretty simple. First, we took the data from the legacy system, which was distributed across multiple services and multiple, multiple databases. Then we transformed it into format that Kratos understands and accepts. Then we injected this information into Kratos dat database directly and make some extra calls to the identity mapper to properly bind UCP user with the new Kratos identity. And this helped us to actually bind the existing users in the old system with the users in the Kratos. The whole process took a few hours. But since we are using Kratos as a secondary authentication system, we could wait patiently for it to finish. One thing we had to add to Kratos was implementation of our custom hash hashing algorithm. The hashing algorithm that Kratos currently supports is very different from the one which we, which we were using because of uh, our legacy constraints. This allowed existing users to successfully log in, in using Kratos after the import. It was important for us to compute pas password hashes in the same way our legacy system did to keep them consistent between systems. While they were running to, to systems at the same time in production. Adding this code was pretty straightforward. Since our old system was also written in Golag, it was almost as easy as copy and paste code from one place to another, and it worked well. Now, data consistency was very important. Uh, after the import, we had to make sure that this data stays consistent. So every operation on the old system must be replicated on the new systems and vice versa. It is very important to identify all the potential processes that alter identities in any way. We had two authentication systems running in the production 
at this point. There are many multiple services that interact with identities, registration, OEDC service, right to be forgotten, authentication, and such. All of them need to alter data in both systems. Some will modify user identities, some will delay, delete users altogether, some will change their passwords. Those changes have to be reflected in both systems for the whole process to complete. How we solved it? Uh, we used the hooks that Kratos provides to plug in into flows that interest us and made necessary changes to the old authentication system via API. Similarly, we track every change that was happening in our legacy system and propagated it to Kratos using API it provides. We had to add some extra endpoints to do that, but it was fairly easy. And we were able to push some changes to ORI and we, they were quickly accepted, which we liked very much. That was one of the reasons we chose to use ORI solution in the, very, in the first place. With shadow mode running, we are able to pinpoint any holes in our identity synchronization process and patch them before we went live. When we fix some issues, we rerun the identity import, which updated the synchronized identities, and the whole process repeated. After a few iterations, we were ready for the switch. Since both systems had the same information, we could safely switch between them and not worry about losing any credentials along the way. Um, our platform has strict requirements for usernames and identity identifiers. In our case, our main identifier is not an email, but username, and Kratos uh, supports this. Moreover, username must be presented in a very specific format to conform to unified platform requirements. We also have some services that deal with dynamic user blocking and anti-spoof mechanisms to deal with spam and vandalism. All that needs to be checked upon registration and sometimes even when user logs in. Kratos did not provide webhooks that did provide webhooks that can provide external services with information about user flows, but it was working rather as a notification or event and could not interrupt user flows easily. We have decided to extend functionality of the webhooks in a way that it, now, it is now possible to cancel user flow. For example, login or registration will be interrupted by the service via webhook and user will not proceed further. What was important for us is that those webhooks can return errors which are propagated then back to the front end by the Kratos. So user get meaningful error if needed. That was quite a complex change, but together with Ori, we managed to deliver, this, to deliver this functionality to the community. And we hope others can also benefit from this feature. <laughs> 